Hello and welcome everyone to this PGA conversation with the creative team behind Passing. Before we get started, I would love to say a quick thank you to the team at Netflix for making this panel possible for members of the Guild. It is my pleasure to introduce and welcome our moderator, Angela Robinson. Angela is a filmmaker and television writer, and she recently directed Rebecca Hall in Professor Marston and The Wonder Woman, and is also an executive producer on Passing. She is currently working with JJ Abrams and Bad Robot on a TV project for DC Universe. Thank you all so much for being here. And Angela, I will turn it over to you to introduce our panel. Thank you. Hello, everybody. And thank you so much for being here. I am very excited because this is just a brilliant film with brilliant people. Um, I want to do a quick round of introductions, um, although everybody kind of needs no introduction. But I will begin with the director, Rebecca Hall, who's acclaimed for so many things across the stage and screen, um, including performances in Christine, Vicky Christina Barcelona, most recently The Night House, and a gazillion other incredible roles. Um, Tessa Thompson, always incredible. She's blazing trails everywhere from Thor to the beautiful Sylvie's Love. Um, Andre Holland, also incredible. We'll mention performances in Moonlight, Selma, and The Eddie. And Nina Yang, Bon Jovi, uh, producer, who is producing partners with Forrest Whitaker and behind incredible films from Fruitvale Station to Sorry to Bother You. And Margot Hand, the producer behind amazing films like Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar and Brittany Runs a Marathon. So thank you guys so much for being here. I know you are on a crazy tour and I want to, amazing, uh, congratulate you on the Gotham nominations. That's fantastic. So Rebecca, I'm just gonna start with you um, mm -hmm. as, as it should be and ask you what drew you to this story? Well, a whole host of things. I mean, the first thing that got my, my sort of the claws into me as it were was, I read the book 13 years ago at a very specific moment in my life when I was thinking and I guess exploring and around some of the mysteries that are at the center of my own family's racial identity on my mother's side. I now know um, at this point in my life, I didn't quite know this 13 years ago, but I now know that my grandfather on my mother's side uh, was African-American and this is in Detroit, Michigan. He was born in Virginia actually, but this is Detroit, Michigan, and he passed white for most of his adult life. He actually passed indigenous as well, but that's a whole other story. Um, and at the point of reading the book, I remember someone handed it to me and I remember looking at it and thinking, it's passing, like, what does that even mean? And when I read it, it was, it was a lot for me because not only did it give me a framework from which to discuss my own racial identity and to think about compassion for my grandfather's choice, but it also gave me, it gave me a framework to think about identity. Um, because I think ultimately the, the book is really an exploration of, of the, the freedom or lack thereof that any of us have to forge our own identity in relation to a society that tells us who we ought to be and how much we internalize that. And this is the sort of person that I think I ought to be, but what is the kind of person I actually want to be? And it struck me as every bit as relevant and poignant and meaningful now and 13 years ago as it was in 1929. Um, and I couldn't believe that there wasn't a film of it, honestly. I mean, I sort of could, but also I couldn't. I found myself sitting down and immediately writing the first draft of the screenplay in the 10 days after finishing the book. And it was, you know, crude and rough around the edges, but a lot of the sort of core ideas of the movie that you see now were in that first imagination of the film. Um, and then it was just a very long road of trying to get it made, <laughs> you know, and, and part of that roadblock was my own hesitancy, lack of courage. Um, and then took me six years to get over that. And then 
took another seven years of actively trying to get the money. Um, but, you know, I had champions like the three of you right there. Um, Angela <laughs> Robinson being someone who I showed it to fairly early on and, and said, you got to do this. Mark had another to person do it. that was like, I'm going to stick by it. And then when we met Nina and Forrest, it was like the first producers that really, truly said to me unconditionally, we'll get this made how you want to make it. And they never said no to me, which I'm still kind of in awe of. I mean, sure, we had to make it for less money and compromises in that way, but like the the kernel of it is, you know, they facilitated this in a very real way. Amazing. There's also a Tessa question for you. Mm -hmm. um, the the relationship between you and Claire played by Ruth Nega in the movie is so beautifully rendered. And um, could you tell us a little bit about how you went about forming your character and working with Ruth to create the very specific on-screen dynamic that you have? Um, yes. Um, I wanna say thank you to you, Angela, because uh, I would, this film probably, I wouldn't have done it, I think, in no small part of it. What wasn't for you being very scrappy because I was technically unavailable and you texted me or wrote me to say, you should read this thing. I don't think you can do it, but you'll want to do it. And you were absolutely right. And I made myself available. So I'm forever grateful to you um, and to all scrappy producers out there that don't take no for an answer and decide to see for themselves. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, the relationship with Ruth is a, is a special one, I think, in terms of, you know, every performance, I, I always feel like performance is always something that's done, you know, between people. Um, and I think with this one, especially so, it felt like there's a kind of symbiosis in a way, um, because the film has a kind of restraint that has to do, I think, with Irene's uh, restraint and repression um, and I felt very free to uh, allow my own performance to be understated and, and be subdued in a certain way because I knew that um, what Ruth would bring is this kind of I don't know the the opposite of that in some way this this um, you know that she'd be verbose and she'd have this sort of ferocity in this energy. Um, and in that way, it sort of felt like we were, I don't know, playing a piece of music together. I don't know how else to describe it. And then I think in terms of the chemistry, whatever that is, I don't know. I think it, I think it has to do with us both loving each of the characters a lot and being wowed by them and also uh, um, confused by them and interested in them and curious in them um, that created a, a, a kind of energy between us that I'm really grateful for. And then, you know, I think with Andre too, we worked so intimately because we were working in quite small spaces. The film itself has this feeling of suffocation in a way and claustrophobia. And especially when we were shooting in the house, we were all in there <laughs> together a lot. And there was this, yeah, this kind of intimacy. And also I think it creates a, something I really love about theater, it, it feels really communal, you know, sometimes film can, you go, go off to your own little spaces, but this one felt like we were always kind of in it together. And I, and I think that that gets captured on screen in a way that you can't necessarily articulate, but you can, you know, feel, I think the performances feel lived in and relationships feel lived in because it felt like we were kind of really in it together. Mm -hmm. Andre, I'll ask you the same because the dynamics between your characters and with you in between these two very complicated dynamic um, dynamic women, um, how did you approach and navigate um, your process? Um, well, uh, I think mostly, firstly, I had the benefit of this existing relationship that Tessa and I have from uh, another film that we worked on a number of years ago. And, you know, we always had a really cool chemistry and, and connection. And so I think, you know, we were able to lend that to these parts and to this situation. 
Um, and then the work that Rebecca did just in the drawing of the characters on the page made it all so clear. Um, and um, yeah, and then Nina, you know, created her company, you know, she and Forrest created a, a, an environment on set in which everybody felt that they could do their best work, you know, and so it, um, all of those things together, I think, made it possible for for some some good work to happen. But mostly, it was I just uh, surrendered to this talent and to Rebecca and to to everyone else around, and and uh, we went on a fun ride together. Mm. <laughs> That's a great segue for Nina and Margo. Um, I'll throw this to both of you. Uh, what was the most challenging aspect of getting passing made? Because uh, I know it was not easy. Uh, or Margo, why don't you go first and I'll do a follow up with Nina. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, you know, the most difficult part was getting it financed for the number that we could actually make the film that Rebecca had written. Um, that was the most challenging part and to do it in 4-3 in black and white, you know, those, com the combination of those things made it very difficult. Um, and we had a lot of people who were willing to give us like a million dollars. We had a lot of people who were willing to give us money if we shot it in color or if it wasn't in 4-3. Um, but it wasn't until we met Nina and Forrest that we found partners who were willing to do it exactly as Rebecca wanted it to be done. Uh, and then practically, you know, even at the budget level that we had doing 1920s in New York is very challenging and, and very costly. It's probably the most expensive period to recreate. <laughs> from like a costumes, props, vehicles perspective. So uh, that was challenging. We had a challenging schedule, but, you know, just finding the right partners. 23 days. 23 days. Okay. <laughs> anyone who was wondering, 23 days. 23 days. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. But just, yeah, finding, finding the people who believed in the story, understood that we needed to make it for a certain number in order for it to be successful and for it to be seen and kind of be part of a changing dynamic on like what's valuable and what movies should be made. And, you know, we knew we couldn't do that if we only had a, like, you know, a million dollars or if it wasn't what Rebecca wanted to do, you know, in terms of black and white and four, three, it wouldn't have the impact. So that was the most challenging part. That's what took, you know, the longest. And Nina, um, could you talk a little bit about um, um, your, your um, partnership with Forrest and your experience? Like, what was it about this film and Rebecca's vision that brought you guys onto the project. So, so my partnership in for with Forrest has now we, we're now in business for eleven years together since we started Significant Productions, and we really wanted to focus on filmmakers. We want to be an artist-driven company. And we were so fortunate that the first filmmaker that we supported is Brian Kugler. But at that time, I was like, no, not interested. Um, he's a first time director, first time black director. Michael B. Jordan is not a movie star. Everything that you can think of people would say to you and verbalize that were so hurtful. And that was, you know, that was eight years ago. And then from that journey, we continued to be out there in the pavement, be in the trenches of convincing people of value of every film that we've taken on. And, and, and it, so when I found out about passing, that it was available for us to take part in, it was, first of all, such a exciting opportunity, but also when it first came to Forrest and myself, someone says, you guys are really um, known for taking on challenging projects, which is not like the best way of how people see us. And I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but, but, um, but knowing <laughs> that, that Tessa and Ruth were attached at the time and Rebecca's directorial debut, that was really exciting. And then I got to read her screenplay and fell in love with her adaptation. But I had, you know, certain concerns because I was like really nervous. I said, is it okay for Rebecca to tell this story? And when we first met in New York, I was really blown away by her artistry. She showed me her, uh, she, she actually hand-drawn in, in the storyboards of the entire movie. And then we talked about her heritage and her maternal side of the family. And it really kind of broke my heart of, of what people had to do to pass, you know, why. And so she became the perfect person to tell the story. And then from that journey on, 
you know, with agencies and agents are saying value, 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 value. Is it, you know, can you convince her to shoot it in color? Can you make sure that she doesn't um, do it in 4-3 ratio? All that. But after meeting her, I'm like, we're doing exactly what she wants to do. And we have to find the right finance partners to come through that doesn't disrupt her vision, but also understands commerce meets art. And that's really, really important. And another Another layer of that is making sure finance partners that came through were people of color. And that was really, really important too, because you know, we had three black women that were investors in our film. And, and that to me is critical. And so, so not only in front of the camera, not only about Rebecca's vision and artistry, but behind the camera, we had everybody involved that really believed in the importance of the story, the value of the story. So we're going in with our hearts full and, and not being afraid what we're taking on and, and its challenges, inherent challenges that the industry views us as. So. Amazing, amen to that. Um, for Rebecca, Tessa and Andre, um, I know I learned so much about myself and my craft from working with Rebecca. And I wanna know what you guys learned from each other collectively. Mm. I can start that. I can start that. I, you know, it's uh, there was one big surprise about shifting from acting to directing. I've always wanted to direct. I think I've always approached acting in many ways like a director. But there was one big surprise that I didn't see coming, which was that I developed a new sort of respect for actors. Mm. And I, it's funny, you know, you spend your whole life doing it. You can get alarmingly blasé. You know, and I found myself getting a little bit like, well, you know, it's not brain science. Everyone stop taking this so like seriously. Why are we getting all emotional about this thing? You know, I, I, I admit I had got to that sort of place in my relationship with acting. And it was incredibly humbling to sit behind the camera and see Andre and Tessa and Ruth give so much of themselves on a daily basis essentially because I asked them to <laughs> and I was like that I just found it incredibly moving and I found myself in awe of what actors do specifically these actors but all actors really yes and Andre well I'll, I'll say something quickly that which is that you know with Rebecca I, I've never told you this but I, I would, was really blown away by um your preparation, obviously, and the precision with which you work. Um, I've been in situations on sets before where, where it felt as though uh, the person in charge of the storytelling wasn't necessarily inside of the story. Um, and often everyone suffers <laughs> in those kinds of situations. But for you, I, I was so blown away by how you had thought through each and every move of the film. You know, it made us all feel, made me feel incredibly like held and taken care of. Um, so, and I see the same in your acting work as well, which is, you know, continue, like always blows me away. And then with Tessa, you know, we've, we've known each other for a long time now, and there's so many things about you that I admire, really. And uh, this was my first time, I think, um, seeing you not only as like a wonderful actress, but also as a, as a producer and a person who's like holding the story in her, in her head, you know, and, and being aware of like how the crew are doing and how the other actors are doing. It was really remarkable to see that in you. and. Um, I learned a lot from you. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I feel emotional. <laughs> I think it's the combination of this talking about the film and not sleeping enough or something. <laughs> um, I just feel incredibly proud of you, Rebecca. <laughs> I know I've said that. Um, okay, I'm gonna try not to cry. I think I learned, I, I learned a lot actually. I think I learned that I really, uh, wanted to produce in a, in, a, in a real way while making this film. Um, I guess like you, you were expressing this yesterday, Rebecca, that you felt always, even as an actor, you were hyper aware of sort of the totality of the story that you were telling. And I think I've always felt kind of similar. And also meanwhile, I felt like a cog in something moving acting. And, and I think particularly on this one, being, in a film produced by all of you, frankly, and also as Andre just voiced, working on something where you had such clarity of vision, you know, made me really interested in this idea of 
getting to do what all of you have done, which is to be with a project for a lot of years in some cases, and to see it through, and to have this sort of resolute um, inability to make those big concessions that people sometimes ask you to make, and this like certainty of belief that you're that you are going to do this thing. And I think really seeing this through and getting to be a part of it made me go, I want to do that. I just, I will feel so happy doing that <laughs> forever and ever. And in some ways it might be more gratifying than anything I've ever experienced personally as an actor. So that was something I learned um, from all of you in a way. I, I think something I learned from you that I've always admired about you from afar, but I see the way in which it influences your work is I think there's this idea sometimes that, um, you know, because the work is hard, that it's kind of okay to, and it sometimes it is, it's fine that we get short with each other and, you know, but you are like, um, Andre, the, the way that you always bring a sort of gentle and kind and considered energy to the people you work with always is really something I think is um, just special and a gift to us. And the way that I wish that most all people <laughs> worked, <laughs> I just think we should be able to make things that are hard and also do it kinder, um, frankly. And so I, I, I feel, you know, like you teach everyone when with with the way that you are. Um, anyways, those are some of the things I learned. Yeah, and just your, I, I learned a new way of sort of thinking about preparation from you, Rebecca. And I think just the experience of getting to work so intimately and yeah, and, and, and get an insight into how you prepare when you're acting, I think in something was really like, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I have had the experience myself and I know that you did where you work on something for many, many years. And um, then you have this incredible cocoon, which is the art making itself where you are, you're in it. And then there comes this moment where it's released into the world kind of, and there's a kind of mental exercise of wanting it to be in the world, but also wanting to kind of protect what you've created together. And I was wondering about how that process is as a first time, as this is your first, I mean, it's incredible that it's your first film, um, but if you could talk a little about how that works as an artist for you, for you Rebecca. And yeah. I still haven't come out the other side of it. So I feel I'm, I'm a slightly unequipped, ill-equipped to answer this question, but I'm, mm -hmm. really, I'm definitely, I'm definitely experiencing that. I mean, it's funny because slightly how this film was built was always very intentionally that it doesn't really exist without an audience as it were. Like there's so, there's so little about the film that tells you what to think deliberately because there are so many interpretations and they're all valid. And I think whatever you are, whatever you are bringing with you, whatever aspects of your identity are interacting with the movie, I think will inform the reading. So in a way it's always craved this moment. Um, mm. But something that I think that we all strive so hard to do to get to this moment also means that there is a certain sort of protectiveness. It kind of feels like, you know, now we're on the precipice of sending our baby out into the world, you know, maybe without a coat on and it's raining <laughs> or, or not, you know, or it's going to be sunny and we don't know. <laughs> but like it's, it's, like, it's just, it feels very vulnerable. Um, <laughs> especially something that I've also tinkered with for 13 years. I mean, 13 years is kind of exaggeration. I mean, the script sat, did sit in a drawer for six years, but then, you know, from the point that I actively was trying to make it and redrafting it and showing it to people. And then the editing process, which was longer and I'm grateful for it, honestly, if I'm being completely honest because of COVID um, and very quiet, you know, I wasn't in a room with an editor, I was at home and 
And we'd be working on sort of like 30 second chunks. And I'd write my editor detailed notes. Can you take four frames at 4.5 minutes into the scene and then cut to this shot? And then it would take two hours for Sabine to upload what would usually take 30 seconds in the room. And that time was so intensely peaceful because whatever the, whatever the sort of, like, you know, incredibly specific note I had given to her, I then had to have two hours to clear my head entirely before I could actually receive if that note made any sense. And it, it's obviously an impossible way to work and, and nobody could do that again, but I am also very grateful to it. But the reason I'm talking about it in relation to your question is because I think even though I knew the film had this potential to be very wide and very seen and very universal, in, that, in those moments, it felt so entirely mine and my garden. <laughs> you know and it's so it's 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 emotional to let go of that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and wonderful at the same time it's it is such an incredible film I can't wait for people to to experience it like I've experienced it um I'll leave you I think um with one more question for the group um Okay, sorry, I'm getting little things in the chat. Um, uh, I would go, I'm gonna kind of go down the line super quick and it, which is totally unfair with this question, but I would say biggest joy, biggest fear <laughs> that you experienced in this, in this experience. If you just, uh, actually Nina, I'm gonna start with you. Okay, so, um, Biggest fear, also the biggest fear, is because we all put our name and, and reputation, everything we work for on the line for this film. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest fear because going to backers to say, this film is gonna be incredible, it's gonna be amazing. So that's biggest fear because as producers, we gotta do that to, to, to convey that confidence. But seeing the first frame of the film when we're on set, I was like, oh, we got this, Rebecca's got this, this is amazing. Um, biggest joy, um, not only seeing how incredible the film turned out, but my biggest joy is that a studio like Netflix saw us and valued us and said, we see what uh, the amount of love that this whole team have poured into it. And we're gonna value this because with a film starring talent of color is inherently challenging when it comes to value. And we're constantly fighting for this. And for, for, that, for the studio to come through and Netflix to say, we value, we will push you forward and we will you know, put our resources and effort to make sure that this film gets seen. So that's my greatest joy. That is an incredible answer. I realize we have to end a few minutes quickly. So I'm going to hand it back to Rebecca for the last biggest joy, biggest fear, but I'll switch it. That's better to be biggest fear, biggest joy. Um, <laughs> I, I've got a really short answer for this. So, you know, we can all go on about our day. Um, biggest fear, making the movie. Biggest joy, <laughs> making the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all so much. Um, wait, let me make sure that I get it exactly right. Well, help me out here because I realize the movie comes out in theaters October. Wednesday, October 27th. October 27th. Incredible. Wednesday. Go see it in theaters. October 20th. It is, a, it is cinema. It needs to be experienced in theaters. But if you can't, <laughs> then November it comes 10th. out on, on Netflix. Say it again. November 10th on Netflix. November 10th. Thank you so much for coming. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for giving us the gift of this film. It's an incredible, incredible achievement. And congratulations to you all. Thank Bye. you, Angela. Thank you. Bye, Angela. Bye. Bye. Bye.